Hey guys, Jonathan Fields here, and I'm uh, pretty psyched to be hanging out with Julian Smith on the other end of my Skype line here. Dude, where are you again? You're in somewhere in Canada, right? Yeah, Montreal. Yeah, very nice. Okay, so why is it snowing in New York City right now? And are, are you getting snow there? Yeah, well, it's uh, not today. We got it a couple of nights ago, but we were really sure that spring was coming. Yeah. And then... So. Yeah, and a buddy of mine told me it was just 70 degrees and sunny in Colorado, so not too happy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. We pay more taxes. We're supposed to get more sun. What's up with that? Um, all right, so why are we hanging out today? So um, for those of you that have been living under a rock, Julian is a, a, a very cool dude, insanely bright, and um, writes some really uh, provocative, uh, insanely, you know, like, I, it's funny. I've been railing against people using different words that are so watered down lately on the blog, but um, when I actually say that you're transparent and authentic, you're one of the few guys who actually... It's not, it's not a bullshit word when I say that. It's like, yeah. you really are. Um, so, so a couple of weeks ago, you dropped this post that was titled, A Short, Sweet Guide to Being Fucking Awesome. Right. And yeah. I, the post blew me away. I absolutely, I mean, I love everything you write, but this post, I was like, this is just spot on, man. It's like a zillion comments got passed around all over the place. And then it was funny because I went to, to, um, I went to share that post and I yeah. opened up my Twitter like, no. and I paste it in there, and I'm like, do I hit the button or not? Because it's got the F-bomb in the middle of the title. And I'm like, I love the post. I love the sentiment. I love what you write. It's, like, dead on. But is this, how is my, how is my tribe, how are my different tribes going to respond to this? Right. And then we were hanging out. Um, we caught up at South by Southwest and having this conversation about, like, where, where is that line there? So I want to circle back and sort of, like, and, and talk that through. But, um and, and, you know, like looking back through, and I was just scanning back through some of your recent posts also, and um, you use language very literal, liberally. I mean, you're just like, yeah. do, so, so, you know, big open question is, do you censor? Uh, I mean, I still have an internal censor, definitely. I know where the line is. I don't know if I told you this story, but a friend of mine met Hans Rosling, who does these TED Talks with all the bubbles and talking about graphics and stuff like that. And he said, I, Hans Rosling said, on my TED Talks, here's what happens. I swear a little bit, traffic increases. I swear a little bit, traffic increases. I swear a little bit. And then he says, and then there's a drop off. I swear too much and everything drops and everybody hates me. And he goes, I know where that line is. And I'm actually figuring out where that line is. So it is a conscious use of it. And uh, there is a theory behind it. Uh, it's not just reckless, but it came out of a real, like that's how, really how I, how I speak. So right. I, also, I also did a lot of radio, so I don't have to speak that way. But to myself and to friends, I speak that way. So it's just sort of a conscious increase of the use to see as an experiment what would happen. Right. So, so it's kind of fascinating, right? Because, I mean, I, I speak very differently than I write on the blog. I mean, I write kind of stream yeah. conscious on the blog. But there are many times where I would be you know, like using all sorts of language in real life with close friends and people like that, that I, I really I pull back on the blog. And it's funny because my concern is always... You know, if I was starting over as a blogger right now, I would probably do it differently. I would probably just be a lot more open. I would probably right. sort of write the way that you write because that's largely how I speak when I'm just being who I am. Correct. And I, I wonder if I'm, you know, the question for me is, am, am I creating a false impression of who I am and, and what, I'm, what I'm really about by, by censoring that way? I don't think so. I, I, I have to tell you, like, I've, I've done, like I said, like, I've been on traditional radio and I've been on... Uh, I've created content for a long time where my audio content was that way because obviously I was speaking. So there was no way to censor it. You know, right. I was just like, it was, it was a, a very personal podcast at the time. So I just spoke that way. But uh, as time goes on and you become sort of more comfortable with the way that things are online, they know that you're going to swear in person. I don't, I don't think it's hypocritical to, to write that way, everybody writes that way, and everybody speaks and swears. So it's totally fine, but the way that I see it is, uh, is it is a lesson in authenticity. There are very few sensors that we have left, mm -hmm. but everybody knows that that particular sensor exists. So when they see people break through it, they go, he must be telling the truth. Hmm. And so I, I actually gain from, in my opinion, I gain yeah. from, I'm sure I've lost, I'm sure people right. think it's stupid, I'm okay with that. So that's kind of, and when you were saying there's a reason that you do it, there's a method to your madness, that's, that's part of what's behind it then. It's, it is like, like you know, I, I, for, for years, like we would, before Trust Agents came out, you know, you, you publish your first book and you're freaking out. You're like, yeah. this will stand for me for two years or more. 
who knows right. what will happen afterwards. So you really try to make or two it two days, depending on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, or whatever, right. you know. So, um, so I, 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 I did a lot of research, studied a lot about kind of behavior and how people think about things, and I finally came to grips with sort of a conclusion, which is that the same way that everybody is heading towards the internet versus, let's say, traditional publishing, and they're heading towards, let's say, podcasting instead of traditional radio, they are also building towards more and more closeness, like ability to share things, ability to post drunk and pictures on Facebook, and it's less and less of a big deal. And so we're increasingly casual, and the result of that is that we are increasingly okay with swearing, some of us more, some of us less. Right. So I just decided, I, I looked at the path, I saw the end of the path and where that door is, and I just decided to walk through that door today. Right. Instead so, of five years from now. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's kind of interesting for me because I, it's, it's something that I'm dealing with on a pretty regular basis as I blog, and also as I, you were talking a little bit before we, we got on the air here, um, about you know, one of the things that I'm looking to do is I've, I'm transitioning out of the consulting side of my business and putting a big effort into moving into speaking. Mm. And so as I think about that, you know, as I think about how I want to build my presence, my reputation, my brand in that world, I'm, it's like I'm revisiting this whole thing all over again. I remember Gary Vee uh, like a year or two ago, maybe two years ago, um, you know, he, he put, there was like a blog post or he, I remember he put it up somewhere. He's like, yes, I actually can give a talk without cursing. Absolutely. And, and because, but he said like he, he would have to push back with people who were like, Booking him and saying, I'm, I'm actually physically capable of not just like dropping F bombs all over the place. I don't have to do that. I do it because I feel comfortable and the, the, it's the right audience for it. And, you know, like I, I, it's a way for me to connect with them. That's right. Um, and the, so the, the counterpoint to that, it's really interesting because there's not a lot of people out, like there, uh, out there that do that. Gary Vee is one of them, I'm one of them. And there's a few more, but not very many. And it's really interesting because it becomes the thing. You, right. you, you just, in, in every conversation becomes about, oh, this guy swears during, during the talks, or this guy yeah. swears, uh, and actually, I'm, I've totally gotten used to that, and, and so I really, I don't know, maybe it's like I've, I've developed thinking about it as a strategy now, but you discover when you begin to use it, the people are like, oh my god, he's doing it, we're seeing the real him, and, uh, and so, you know, we haven't sworn once during this conversation. I'm sure maybe at one point we will, I don't know. Uh, but the, the, we need to just get out of Gary knows. <laughs> Gary knows what he's doing. And right. once, so it is a strategy like any other, you know, like top 10 lists are a strategy on your yeah. blog. You post a top 10 list, then that's over, um, overused. Okay, well, now it's a top 11 list instead, so it's not <laughs> a top 10. So it's a development of strategy, one after another after another. And so to answer your consulting point, which is very interesting to me. So as I told you before on the call, um, that, that I just came back from a meeting. And so this is the guy's list. It says, meeting Julian Smith on top, meeting Julian <laughs> Smith. And he's got a list of things. And so he says, we are, our interest in your help uh, is bring a new and interesting angle to the story, your transparency and honesty. And then the final one says, your notoriety. It actually says that as an advantage because I don't even know why. Like maybe that it's maybe it's that they know that I'll tell them the truth, right. that I won't lie to them, and say, well, your whole content is bullshit, which I don't think bad. But it's, but the point is, I could, and I, if I if I thought that, I would I would genuinely say so. I'd so be like, do you want to tank? And that's what Gary Vee says. Same thing. He's the most popular example of being able to do that. I think it will happen on television. I think it will happen in radio. I think it'll happen everywhere. Yeah, and well, it'll become I, totally normal. No, I mean, I'm, I'm old enough to remember, um, like, in the early days when NYPD Blue came on the air, and, like, for the first time, they showed, like, a guy's, you know, like, naked buttocks. And it was, like, yeah, this crazy-ass, like, firestorm, and, like, you know, people were going nuts, and, like, they want to shut down the station. And now it's, like, you know, like, it's, it's the stupidest thing. But it is an interesting progression, right? But, and it's, you know, but it's interesting what you said about how, you know, like, it, it creates the, this impression that because you're willing to cross that line, that you will actually be honest and forthcoming in a way that probably a lot of other people just, you know, like meet with somebody and blow smoke up their ass because they want their money. So maybe, but maybe they're looking at you and saying, that's not Julian. It's not, you know, right. he's, he, he's a guy who just goes out there and says what he needs to say and says what's on his mind and he's really mm -hmm. freaking smart. So, you know, like, and I want that. 
So you want to see the, the result of this. Is the result of this is GQ magazine uh, emails me and says that they want my content. And Cosmopolitan magazine emails me and says that they want my content. Hmm. And uh, that's, that's from a, from a, you know, it's funny, like, because on C.C. Chapman, who maybe some people who are listening to this know, uh, published a book called The Content Rules or Content Rules. Yeah, right. and, um, and I laughed at him because uh, I said, you know, I was like, all social media douchebags are now uh, rephrasing themselves and becoming content strategists. Right, right, right. And so, and it's true. Uh, it's the next thing. Cause it's like it's the they realize finally <laughs> that it's not just everything. We have to be on Twitter, but we have to be on Twitter and provide good content. Right. Well, I'm I'm firmly convinced that why that's why nobody carries um, business cards at South by people are like oh it's just not cool anymore. I'm like no, actually, like you're changing what you call yourself so quickly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nobody that's actually wants to spend money on cards because you can't use them for more than like six minutes. So, <laughs> so I never thought about that, but it makes a lot of sense. Because then you never define yourself as anything. Right, exactly. Yeah, you're not like, oh, I have that old card that says social media. <laughs> oh, shit, what am I going to say? So, uh, so, God, what were we talking about? Uh, oh, so yeah, so the point it. is the content um, that pushes the envelope gets, uh, gets seen and, and, and uh, spread disproportionately lots. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if it pushes the envelope even 1% or 5%, you never want to push the envelope 100%. And you'll notice that there's very few things. I, I will never target an individual. Mm -hmm. And I'll never target a group. I mean, I target social media people occasionally, but I'm in that industry, so maybe that's okay. I don't know. Uh, and and so, But there's a reason for that. I, first of all, the strategy does not target and go and say, you're an asshole, you're an asshole. It says... In fact, it usually calls upon the individual reading and says, you have a problem. Mm -hmm. And so they self-identify with it. I right. never tell them, you're an idiot. Instead, I say, if you are doing this, then you should be doing this. Or if you're, you know, the thing about the cult of awesome, they, it asks them to self-identify whether they're awesome or not. And whether they should be awesome or whether or not they're, you know, the point is, is that it doesn't insult anyone. Yeah, and, and, and but and the thing is also you you do it in a way where it's it's and, and you can tell me whether it's a, a accurate perception or not where it feels organic, it feels like this is just like screwing, like this is who you are. It comes pretty naturally. You write, you just write, you mm -hmm. know. And um, where but but that's that's an art form. I mean, that it's not easy to do. There aren't a lot of people that could step out and sort of I think do it. Um, and I think but that's part, John. That's crazy that you're saying that because because if it is the person that you are. Then yeah, why is no, it I, so hard to be that person? No, you know what I think it is. Also, it's what I was trying to say is that uh, very inarticulately is that you you bring so much extraordinary value mm. to sort of the language that you use and the way that you frame it. And I, I think a lot of people have have a lot of trouble finding that balance. Um, maybe. And yeah. or maybe they just don't have enough to say, so they're using you know they're just like you know like dropping cursors left and right because you know they're just doing it for shop value and they think you know things yeah. get spread around a lot more. Um, you know, and, and, you know, there's, I wrote, I wrote a post, I don't know, a couple of years ago for Brian over on copy it was like train wreck blogging. And it was all about a whole bunch of people who were just like, you know, had these crazy, like, you know, like messed up disasters of lives and, were, and, and people love reading and they're hugely transparent about their lives. Um, yeah. and you know, it was the content and the fact that they were actually out there and the fact that people, you know, like it, it made people feel good about the fact that their lives were really messed up, but not that messed yeah. up. Uh -huh. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, this is I. Th I think using you know, like like swearing in your content is an art form. You know, um, sure. I think doing it. You know, so what I was trying to say is is you do it in a way which is really compelling and also which is so so well bundled with value and like really provocative thought leadership that um, it's it's really easy to buy into it. So my guess is there are a whole bunch of people where if they were in a conversation and somebody else was standing and like dropping the equivalent, you know, like ratio. Uh, yeah, you know, like f bombs and stuff like that in a conversation, they would right. be, they would be horrified. They'd be like, "Screw this! I'm out of here." This person's like vulgar. They're disgusting. But then they'll turn around and read your stuff, and they'd be like, "Freaking genius! This guy is amazing!" Right. And so, so uh, you're uh, you, of course you're right, but the but internally the process, the internal conversation that occurs when you're creating that content, and I mean you create it with yours too. Like every you have those internal barriers, and you know where they are. Yeah. they're just different from where mine are. Right. right. So you, but you've you've still created them. So I remember the first time, uh, you know, uh, James Chartrand from yeah, Copy right. Have you met 
this person? Mm -hmm. Yes. You have? Okay. Have. So uh, this innuendo will become clear if you do any research on the internet. Right. <laughs> uh, so uh, so I, I'm, we, we got together and we chatted one time, you know? And uh, so one time uh, about a week after that, it was in November or December, and I was having this crazy week with content where I, I put out a post called the, um, God, uh, the quick... 12 step guide to quitting that job you fucking hate but with but with the the, the sort of gibberish as the title yeah, you know yeah, when you right. shift and like all the numbers so i i remember i published it i was like it just came out one morning i was sitting in, in this exact place where it's where i work when i wake up and i was like this is going to be this is going to be really interesting to see how it flies. And immediately, something at like 250 Facebook likes, which is disproportionate right. for how much, because they look at it, and it's actually really interesting. Because you put a, if you put a Facebook or a Twitter button right next to the word "fucking," <laughs> people just they're like, "Oh my god, bad!" <laughs> <laughs> they slam it with their uh, fists. You know, so, I'm gonna have to test that now. <laughs> It. You know, so I'm giving away all my secrets here. It's, uh, <laughs> so when you put it in the title, like something immediately happens because people see it on Facebook or they see it on Twitter and they go, oh my God, you know, you should see the number of Facebook and, and Twitter likes that's on that post now. It's sitting around 3,000. Uh, yeah. So my, my point is, is that I, I remember breaking through that barrier and I was talking with James and I have a post, I'm, I'm not going to say the title of the post, which came a few after that. You can look for it in November or December. It's easily the most offensively titled post I've ever written. And, and I, 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 I called James and I said, you know, you should, I'm, I'm going to publish this post. And it is this and it is that. And it was, I was having this crazy week with content where I was testing and seeing what would happen if I did this and if I did parodies and all these things. And I was like, I'm having the most unbelievable traffic week. People are coming out of the woodwork and saying that they love me. I was like, this is really strange. And I realized that I was, all I was doing was being who I authentically actually am. Mm -hmm. And so this old version of myself who was in a, who existed in podcasting and who existed in all of these places uh, was simply coming back. It wasn't like a fake me or anything like that. And I, right. and so James said, Oh my God, you're not actually going to post that. Are you like, and now we're talking about it so much that people are going to be like, right. oh, no, go check it. It'll go viral again. Cause that's what happened. Because James says, oh, it's going to go viral. I know it. It's going to go viral. And then sure enough, I press post and it's like, it becomes this explosion. And this is a really offensive post with an offensive title. And people were discussing it. Some people were offended. So the point of that internal wall and passing that internal wall is difficult no matter where that wall is. No matter if it's saying, saying fucking in the title or no matter if it's just going, you know, I'm going to talk about religion in this post. And I know some people would disagree with that or something. Yeah. Everybody has that thing, but the point is, is that as soon as you pass that, it's only then that that content becomes disproportionately spread. Right. No, so, and, and it's interesting because I'm I'm at that point right now where sort of like in in my in my personal brand and my content and stuff like that, I, I'm like I have to make a decision. You know, I have to make a decision whether I want to go there um, yeah. or what, because also it would be so it would be so different from the brand that I built for the last three years. That's right. Um, so that I know there are going to be a chunk of people that have been just sort of like bouncing around with me for a while. They're like, hmm, this isn't what I signed up for. But then, you know, like the flip side is then I get to be real. Then I also get to be more or more real. It's not like I've been false, yeah. but I just haven't been, you know, I haven't let as much of me show. Um, right. But actually, and, you, have, you have parts of you that I would never show. Like you're like, this happened with my family and with my this and that and that. And I'm like, there's no way that I'm, you know, and right. So we get different levels of comments. Yeah. You might get comments like, "You're a big wuss." And stop <laughs> talking about stop talking about you know flowers and puppy dogs or something. And I we get the opposite where people just there's like this backlash of how dare you talk to me this way? But we're just speaking to a different audience that have different uh, internal values. Right. I think, but you know your people might very well swear. Like, right, and, and that, that, that's the thing. It's like I mean I'm, I'm making this big assumption that you know because and, and also I have. I've, I've developed this just tremendous comment community, and like bloggers left and right are shutting off their comments because they're like, oh, that people are just trying to scam like link juice, they're trying to like you know just yeah. the, you know, whatever it is. And I'm like, you know what? Actually, I can So many times the comment section of my blog just like completely dusts the value oh, of the post itself. 
Yeah. And I'm like, I, how could I turn that off? I learned so much from them. But also, I've, I've curated that and sort of cultivated a sort of comic community that is very much in line with the brand that I've laid out on the blog. So, yeah, but, so I wonder how many of those people are holding back who they really are in the comments because they see me sort of setting a certain tone on the blog. And, like, how would that whole community and ethic change? You know, like, if I just opened up and started sort of, like, uh, ranting a little bit more and being a little bit, you know, yeah. using the language that I use every day with my friends. So um, I, I think it is worth testing, at least for me, and just kind of seeing Definitely. how I feel about it. You know, it's like I, I have to push that boundary personally. Um, you you feel like you – it's like what, it's because with – it is – I just had a realization. I posted about it the other day. Of course, everyone ignores it. Uh, that uh, that that all conversation is simply highly targeted content. And so uh, the reason Gary Vee is successful is because he's creating a tiny bit of content for one person. For example, Jonathan Fields, which takes about 15 seconds to type into Twitter. And right. so Jonathan Fields receives it and he goes, "This is content meant directly for me." Mm -hmm. So of course, you eat it up, right? right? Um, so the development of all kinds of content, including conversation, becomes about targeting either somebody in an extremely effective targeted way or targeting as many people as possible within a given mindset. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I know that I speak to a, f a field of people which, uh, which is very vast. You know, like there's no, for any huge number of people, it's like the personal development, I, I don't even want, it just offends me even to use those words. So, but, but you have no choice but to speak to uh, a really tough audience, a really jilted and sort of jaded audience that has heard this and has heard that, and this is nothing new, and that's nothing new, using something different. And so, right. whatever blogger you are, you have to either be more targeted or you have to become more memorable in a different way. Yeah. So, it's a, it's a really challenging thing. It is. You know? And what's interesting to me is, too, and, and this is... You know, I, I owned a yoga studio for seven years, and I taught yoga. So I was like, sitting there walking around with bare feet teaching yoga and talking about all sorts of spiritual things. And it, it wasn't unusual for me to be like sitting there in a packed room of students, and we're like 45 minutes into a 90-minute class. Yeah. And, I, and, I'll, and I'll be like, you know, and I'll, I'll just be like, you know, like, get a fucking life, people. Yeah. And, and like people are like, <gasps> and half the people start yeah. cracking up. And four you, people you, felt it, you felt it just now, didn't you? You felt yeah. it. You, you, you felt the wall literally I, as you I were doing did. it. I <laughs> did. Yeah, it's like bam. <laughs> um, uh -huh. But so, you know, but, and 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 it's funny because like uh, that was my that was who I was, and, and you know, like, I had a big following and packed classes because I was the dude who was just like out there and being real in a very woo woo world. Um, yeah. And it's funny that I haven't really been willing to go all the way there in my online persona. Um, you just went there, by the way, and it yeah, uses no. your content. I mean, I know. Content, well, as, as soon content. as this video comes out, that like that's it. Like, <laughs> or, oh my god! You know, what, you know what might actually happen, Jonathan? Nothing. Or, yeah. Not a fucking thing right. will happen. And then, then when that happens, it'll be like, oh, I see. So that's all that he is. And so all you get is this. I mean, you're, you can either do it, like I said, five years from now, whatever that barrier is. I don't even care if it's swearing. For me, it's swearing. People say I can't swear. It's on a professional site, all this stuff. I'm like, fine. But right. there is a line, and you need to push past that line. And that's the only point at which people start to think that you're interesting and different uh, Aaron Wall, super yeah. famous search marketer, right. I was in search marketing for a while, uh, said you need a strong editorial voice inside of your space. And so mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how boring your industry is, I don't care if it's blend tech, it's a strong, a strong uh, editorial voice yeah. where people, you really find out and you push the envelope, whatever it is. And that's why people's content is boring. Because yeah. you can go through the posts like, and be like, oh, yeah, it's really interesting, lots of information, but so what? People ignore it. Yeah, no, I think the voice matters so much. Um, all right, no, this is very cool. Okay, so one last really just super purpose, like a very practical question to, to end this on, actually, because we've been going to some pretty cool shit here. Yeah. Um, so re just pure, straight up, um, one of the concerns that a lot of bloggers have, a lot of content creators have, is is this going to get through the spam filters? You know, like, is this going to no. kill my traffic because nobody's going to be able to read it anywhere? Uh, have mm -hmm. you sort of explored that or had issues with that? Uh, well, I mean, it's... You know what? To tell you the truth, I haven't really thought about it. But it's, I think the majority of the traffic, if I look at it now, comes from email or RSS or Twitter, which are generally like pretty savvy people that right. have sophisticated spam filters and not the crappy, I don't know, live.com ones or whatever they are, right. you know? Uh, I don't, I see a significant increase in traffic. I, and again, like, 
I, I just I'm not telling people to swear. Yeah, right. This is just I've I decided a long time ago that I was going to have a really personal online voice, and I have I'm not beholden to anyone. I don't have consulting fees. I do. I mean, you know, I I do get paid by these things. But I'm, I, if all those things go away, I'm not all of a sudden like, oh no, I have no marketable skills. Like, it just turns out that the more that you, the more that you speak to your audience in a general way, you know what I really figured out is this: is the more the content sounds like you getting drunk on a Friday night with a bunch <laughs> of your friends, and then it's four o'clock in the morning and someone's slamming the piano, and another guy is rolling around on the ground for no reason, and then somebody says something. And they say something and everybody cracks up and they're like, oh, that's your content. Hmm, that's pretty funny. That's your content right there. And nobody is willing to go there. They think that they can only go there with two or three people. Wrong. The whole internet wants this. That's right. why, get, again, Gary Vee, he knows. Yeah. They want to hear the real shit. Yeah. No, totally. And that's yeah. a re- I think that's a good place to end it on also. They want to hear the real shit. Um, yeah. That's, so, that's it. Where can, um, most, most of the internet already knows who you are and where to find you, but for the eight people who don't, where can people find you? Uh, I have a blog at inoveryourhead.net. I'm at Julian, uh, written J-U-L-I-E-M, on Twitter. And uh, I don't know, any, you can find me anywhere. Email me, uh, Google me, whatever it is you want. Awesome, totally. man. Very yeah, cool. I had a good time. Yes, thank you. This was awesome. Take care. See you later.